always glances at whenever I need to switch on to the next slide. So welcome to for attend for coming to this presentation about the OER platform Open Learn Create and how our team at the Open University are using it to support open curriculum design. Um, for the purposes of this presentation, I've got a couple of definitions of OER and OEP. Um, OER are freely accessible, openly licensed or public domain online resources, which can be used for teaching, learning, assessment and research in their original form or reused, revised, remixed and redistributed. Some OER have digital badges or certificates which learners can share to demonstrate their participation. Um, Open educational practices is all about sharing and developing best practice in education in an open and accessible manner. Um, open educational practices can be a way of widening access to education or to increasing the reach of educational resources or improving the quality of education. Um, so I'm going to start off with a, um, a brief overview of Open Learn Create. Um, Open Learn Create has been discussed in presentations at previous OER conferences. Um, so this is a summary of the platform for those of you who haven't previously encountered it and an update for those of you who have seen or used it. Um, the Open University's Open Learn Create platform hosts OER from a range of providers, including courses and resources created in partnership between external organisations and the OU. Open Learn Create is a platform where anyone can create and share OER with guidance and support provided by the OU and advice offered via mailbox responses. Um, Open Learn Create was founded as an experimental OER platform alongside the Open University's Open Learn platform in 2006 with grant funding from the William and Hewlett F Flora Foundation. Um, at the time, it was called Open Learn Lab Space. Later, it was called Open Learn Works. It still shares its Moodle code base with Open Learn, though there are some differences between the platforms um, regarding their purpose and, of, and audience and functionality. Um, so Open Learn, which is the picture on the left, um, is the home of OU Free Learning and has recently become entirely Moodle. It was a combination of Moodle and Drupal, and it's now in the cloud. It has English, Welsh and Ukrainian language packs installed. Open Learn Create hosts OU partnership project courses, pilot and experimental course spaces, and courses by external organisations and individuals, some of which they build themselves while others ask us to help them build their offerings. It has 24 language packs installed, though not all are currently used. Um, the default content type on Open Learn Create is courses. It also has descriptors of materials, articles, guides, handbooks and competitions, as you can see here from this picture. Um, and when the Opening Educational Practices in Scotland project began in 2014, the Open Learn Create platform was envisaged as a home for, o for OOPS collaboration and OER. So the OOPS project funded a redesign and further development in 2016 when the platform became Open Learn Create. OOPS worked with third th sector organisations during 2014 to 2017 to develop OER, which is hosted on Open Learn Create, such as Parkinson's UK, Dyslexia Scotland, and Education Scotland. To this day, the OOPS collection of open educational resources is available on the platform, and you can see some of them here on this slide. And that's the URL at the bottom if you wanted to go to it, although I suggest you just go to the platform and look for it in collections. Um, the platform may, remains open for anyone to create a draft OER, and there is course creation guidance on the site in the Get Started section about using the Moodle tools available to external unit users. There's also a learner and course creator support mailbox, which is monitored on weekdays. Though more about that later. Since the OOPS project finished, the OU has continued to host, maintain, and sometimes further develop Open Learn Create alongside Open Learn. Um, which obviously, um, because it's the home of OU Free Learning, gets a lot of development funds and production costs um, paid for. Um, this work is spearheaded by the OU's corporate and commercial team who are based in learner and discovery services at the OU. 
LDS also has teams managing module production for the OU students, and I know some people here um, are involved in that. Open Learn course production, broadcast materials production, plus micro credential and short course production. Um, so it's quite a large department. Some of the Open Learn Create developments, led by the corporate and commercial team, have included making the courses mobile responsive, um, added a cust adding custom header footer functionality, which you can see there on the right hand side, two different collections with custom headers and footers and moving Open Learn Create to the cloud in November 2022. That was a fairly big thing to do, and it was quite exciting as well. Um, so this is a little bit a section about um, how our team uses Open Learn Create for open and closed projects. Um, the Open University's corporate and commercial team are increasingly using Open Learn Create in partnership with internal and external clients to develop learning products and curriculum to support learner requirements. The corporate team consists of the following roles and specialisms. Um, project managers, senior project managers, senior producer open education projects. That's me. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, digital development editors, production editor, um, a project coordinator who's an absolute star, or they all stars really, Digital production assistants, interactive media developer, assistant interactive media developer, graphic media de designers and art workers. So quite a wide range of um, skills and roles. And the specialisms we cover are quite extensive. They're listed in that blue box there. Um, I don't know if I'll read it all out to you. Um, some of our external clients have no previous experience of creating online learning materials. Most of them have no idea about OER. Although in scoping and requirements gathering discussions, often what they describe as a purpose of their potential online course offerings includes a desire to share some resources openly. Whenever possible and appropriate, we encourage open licensing and sharing. Um, most of the external clients um, come to us via the OU's business development unit. Um, that's the, the one on the right. Um, or via the OU Centre for the Study of Global Development. That's the website on the left. Um, our approach is to discuss the client's ideas with them and tease out information about the purpose of the learning resources they want to create, plus who they think the prospective users of those resources will be, and the potential openness of the resources. So always encouraging, do you want to make this open? You know, these are the good things about making it open. So these early discussions usually include a demonstration of existing resources, both on OpenLearn and on OpenLearn Create, and what the platform functionality actually enables. And this often helps them review their initial ideas and start to think of, of the practical and cost implications of what they have in mind. Although OER are free and open to use, they are not free to produce. Um, so, you know, you kind of have to have that discussion. How much is this get actually cost to create? Once the initial details of the learning resources project are scoped and a budget agreed, a learning design workshop is held to capture more of the detail and identify roles and responsibilities of everyone who will be involved in creating the resources. And the nominated corporate and commercial project manager will draft a production schedule. And I will say that we use people from other sections of um, our department for the learning design workshops, because although we can run them ourselves, um, it's often best to go to the people who are doing it an awful lot of the time for other courses. Um, sometimes the content is authored by OU academics in close collaboration with the client, um, or the content is authored by the client with guidance materials provided by our team to assist them. In a similar way to the OU module production process, which some of you may be familiar with, a first draft of content arrives from the author. A digital development editor in our team provides a structural edit and pedagogical advice, working with the authors to improve the content, continuing the work started at the learning design workshop. The aim is always to create engaging learning resources, which will have a positive impact for learners. And that diagram on the right um, is probably quite hard to read it um, because it's so, so much detail, um, but it's basically the sort of 
the, the flow of what happens, um, review, handover, video, audio, graphic and interactive, structural first edit, second edit, content tagging and final review. Um, and that's how it tends to happen in the team. Um, in the meantime, we create a course space on Open Learn Create where the team and the client can add content and activities. Sometimes the course space is used during the first and second draft stages to show the client how specific parts of the course might work to inform their thinking and give them a first glimpse of what the course might look like. Because um, often they have all sorts of expectations about what they think it might look like. And then when they see it, they say, oh, that might not be so right. Or no, that activity is not going to work or whatever. Members of the team are assigned to help build the OER on Open Learn Create, depending on, um, oh, did I skip a slide? Yes, I did, sorry. Um, depending on the needs of the client and the content requirements and the structure of the course. This slide shows some screens relating to building a quiz, Moodle quiz. In this case, for the Scots language and culture course we worked on with the OU in Scotland. So now we'll go back to that slide. Um, clients are given the reviewer role for their draft course so they can view the course during the course building process as learners will see it. So on the left hand side, you see the learner view and on the right hand side is actually what um, those who are editing the course would be able to see. And this is content that happens to be built using OU structured content, which is XML. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of OU XML now. Um, sometimes the client asks for their OER to be piloted with a small group of learners before it's made live. Um, okay, when the course is close to publication, it goes through a quality assurance process with another editor on the team working through the content to check navigation and test that all the activities work as expected. This includes a thorough test of any quizzes using a test account which has the reviewer role. So the learner experience of the course is checked. Um, so we're not just doing it with people who've been piloting it, we're actually doing it with our own test account to see, and usually alongside um, having in another browser open with our normal editing account so we can actually see what's going on and adjust things as we go. It's really useful to do it that way. And we've trained quite a few of the people in the team to do that now. So it's not just me doing it as it used to be. During the final quality assurance checks, if required, the digital badge, statement of participation or custom Moodle certificate is set up by the senior producer or senior project manager as part of the activity and course completion setting configuration process. Um, I mean, the, the platform offers all three things. We used to just use statement of participation and then we got digital badges as well. And more recently, we've started using custom Moodle certificates, which you can see the, the one on the right hand side for FIFA um, and then the one that says second chance. Those are both actually custom Moodle certificates um, rather than statement of participation. And as you can see, a variety of different badge designs. Good communication and collaboration are essential practices throughout course production. This has several benefits. Um, the quality of learning content and activities is improved significantly from the first draft. Um, both the client and the production team learn from each other and they build stronger working relationships. It's really important. It's also likely the course will be built and published on time. Any problems during production will be picked up and addressed quickly before they cause major difficulties. Um, and responding to client needs um, quickly and swiftly has helped us to investigate, and activate and get to know um, previously unused Open Learn Create functionality, such as group enrollment, custom Moodle certificates and assignment. Um, so that's actually stretched us, which has been really important. Um, when I came to this platform nine years ago, I was a complete Moodle novice. I've learned a lot in that time. Sometimes further IT developments to the Open and Create platform functionality are identified, um, de designed and developed, which also benefits other OER projects using the platform. And you'll see an example of that shortly. So now I'm going to talk about some um, 
open and closed combinations of courses, examples of our work that we've we've done on the platform with various clients um, in the last few years. Since the OOPS project finished in 2017, there's been an increase in the number of projects using Open Learn Create for both OER and closed cohort projects in the following typical combinations. OER only, i.e. completely open to anyone to study and access at any time. For example, the Tessa Resources, the Scots Language and Culture course I mentioned earlier, also another collection of courses called TPD at Scale, but there's various others as well. Um, open version of a closed cohort course also hosted on the platform. For example, the FIFA courses, which I'll come to in a moment. Um, Reversioned locally contextualized versions of open learn courses for global development projects. For example, the Skills for Prosperity Kenya courses and the TIDE courses. And then non OER all rights reserved cohort, closed cohort courses for client specific groups. For example, the Daphne NHS diabetes training, which I won't be talking about today because they're not OER. Um, and then some externally produced open courses, which involve us briefly at the publication stage because of the publication approval. And some notable examples include ones by the Motor Neurone Disease Association, Green Aquaculture Intensification in Europe, Perth and Kinross Countryside Trust, which have just put up a lovely little resource about birds, etc. Um, which I quite enjoyed going through and checking for them. Um, so the OER only example is TESSA. Um, with TESSA, it was the, the first, the project first had presence on Open Learn Create from 2015. It's, the project's actually quite a bit older than that. Um, and when it's OER for teachers in English, Swahili, Arabic and French were published for African countries. Um, since the initial materials supporting teachers were published, several OER courses have also been designed and developed for TESA users in collaboration with the OU's International Development Office, which is now its Centre for the Study of Global Development. They changed name last year. Um, so they've been working on it and um, leading its development in several, several years, that particular project. And it gave me great joy at the end of last year. My colleagues were all laughing at me because I was excited in the week before Christmas to actually be making this live. But at the end of 2022, our team built a TESSA portal on Open Learn Create to replace the old TESSA.net website, which had been built in Drupal using the custom header and footer functionality, which had been funded by the FIFA Guardian Safeguarding and Sport Project. So, now I'm going to move on to FIFA, and this is an example of open versions of closed cohort courses in FIFA. Um, yeah, um, FIFA Guardians has been an interesting project, which ultimately provided the much needed custom header and footer functionality for the platform. It has literally been a game changer for Open Learn Create, from which several other OER and closed projects have now benefited. FIFA didn't want the Open Learn Create standard header and footer. And navigation. They wanted something with the FIFA brand and custom navigation for their FIFA learner and open learner versions of the FIFA Guardians safeguarding and sport courses. And they paid for this development work as part of the project, um, which was such a bonus. I was really pleased about that. So this is just showing you um, the, the functionality that a colleague and I have to basically set up custom headers and footers. This is a custom header. And then that's a custom footer for FIFA. In January 2021, we were able to launch the first of the suite of five courses in English, French and Spanish in Open Learn Create with their own specially designed um, custom headers, navigation and footers. Um, the final courses in the suite um, were released earlier this year. Um, so that's just showing you the certificate I mentioned earlier this year. Um, and then the home page of that um, collection has got a video on it. That's not playable. This is just an image of the video. Um, but if I move on to the next slide, this shows you these courses, though not strictly OER in license terms, they're all rights reserved, have open and closed versions. And these are the open versions. The closed cohort versions have enrollment keys and are for people who are doing the FIFA Learners Diploma Program. There are only about 250 of, them, of those people. The open learner versions are for anyone around the world to study. So they have forums, 
and so the forums and written assignments um, have been stripped out from the FIFA learner versions to enable them to be perpetually open courses with no fixed study time start or end date. But everything else is identical to what the FIFA learner versions of the courses um, have for the learners to use. So all the content is the same. It's just they don't have the additional support things like the, the assignment thing and the forums, etc. Um, and they operate very nicely as standalone courses. All five courses in the suite were authored by an OU academic working with FIFA and they were translated into French and Spanish. This means there are six versions of each of the five courses, 30 courses altogether, 15 of them are open for anyone to study. The courses have digital badges and custom Moodle certificates using specially designed FIFA safeguarding and sports certificate background templates, um, which I showed you earlier. The courses have a football th theme throughout. Well, obviously it's FIFA. Um, so generic all sport OER versions for safeguarding sport in sport are being created in a collaboration between the OU, UNICEF and FIFA as openly available training for safeguarding in sport is very important. So that will be coming soon um, in a completely separate collection, which will be, you know, branded as UNICEF, etc. Um, and that's really exciting that there will be some generic versions of these courses, you know, sport, any sport versions. And then our team repurposes OER from Open Learn. Um, we tailor existing courses for local context. This usually means changing some scenarios and activities in the courses to localized examples and replacing some images to make them contextually relevant. One example of successfully reusing Open Learn OER on Open Learn Create is the Skills for Prosperity Kenya project, which featured in a presentation yesterday and at OER 22. Um, our team worked with the project team to build a portal on Open Learn Create using the custom header and footer function to provide training programs for Kenyan public university staff who are responsible for digital education. Um, and the main course on both programs A and B was based on taking your teaching online, which is the one on the left, though it was retitled Open Education and it was rewritten for the context. It was contextualized for Kenya with the help of some OU academic staff who had written the original course. Um, both programs A and B used closed cohort versions of the courses with fixed start and end dates. An OER version available for anyone to enroll on is now available in the online education strand. The Skills for Prosperity Kenya um, project legacy, legacy course, basically. Um, so if you look at, not that you can see it very easily on here, but um, the navigation um, shows online education and that's where the legacy course is hosted. The OU in Scotland have several courses hosted in a collection on Open Learn Create. The most recent, um, which they talked about yesterday at this conference, they've created themselves with a bit of guidance from us. Um, thanks for the shout out yesterday, David. Um, the course is for the Open Learning Champions to help them make good use of Open Learn courses with their groups. Um, our team are just beginning a partnership project in collaboration with the OU in Scotland and North Lanarkshire, North Lanarkshire Council. This will involve curating Open Learn courses into a bespoke collection on Open Learn Create for professional development of the Council's Education and Families Department staff. So, you know, we are continuing to work with the OU in Scotland. Um, long after the OOPS project finished, which is really lovely. Um, our team also creates new OER, including bespoke interactive activities hosted on Open Learn Create. A recent notable example is the Open STEM Africa bespoke interactive science applications that support science teaching in schools, providing a virtual laboratory of interactives which simulate real science experiments. These were built using web-based OU laboratory tools. Although they were designed to be hosted and used on the local school computers in Ghana, these OER science experiments are available for anyone to use on Open Learn Create. Now, naturally, running a, a platform like this has its challenges. Um, it's been going for a long time, um, so there's a lot on it. So, so far I've shown you um, some of the latest Open Learn Create platform functionality and some of the OER projects using the platform. But there are challenges in running an open virtual 
learning platform. And I would, I'll talk about a number of these and the decisions we've made over the years to provide appropriate support and safeguards, both for learners and course creators using Open Learn Create for OER and closed cohort courses. So when the article function was brought in during the OOPS project, initially there was nothing to stop anyone from creating an article and publishing it without anyone checking that it was publishable. This inevitably resulted in spam articles appearing on the site. And I remember a previous OER conference, somebody actually asking me about that. What are you going to do to stop that? Well, sure enough, it happened. So we soon brought in a publication authorization process and some guidance on the site FAQs explaining why articles would remain draft until they'd been checked. So this one came in recently and I can confirm it was spam. Um, so and I mean, at one stage we even had stuff people you know, about bathrooms and mattresses and sinks and goodness knows what anyway. All sorts of plagiarized content people just dropped into an article or tried to publish. Um, until two and a half years ago, the same situation applied to courses, which meant many incomplete courses were being published on the site, which caused complaints to the mailbox from learners who could not complete courses because something hadn't been configured correctly or the quality was questionable. We brought in the course authorization process, which means when a course creator attempts to publish a course, a notification is sent to the mailbox alerting us so we can check it and provide some basic feedback on what still needs to be configured or changed before it can be published. This one is actually waiting for me to check and I know it's a bona fide course, so it's not spam. At first I was writing bespoke um, responses to each course creator, but gradually I built up a document of categorised responses, which I use whenever a document is submitted for publishing, which saves me a lot of time. This document is now being used to inform updates, which will be made by our whole team to the course builder guide and FAQs on the site, both of which have gradually evolved. Once the guide is updated, the bespoke feedback responses will become less detailed and people will be directed to the course builder guide and FAQs as much as possible. Um, we've recently carried out an audit of every course on the platform. As a result, we have put a lot of incomplete course spaces back to draft and in some cases contacted their creators. Many early courses on the platform have been archived or marked as old but kept live for the time being, though a lot more will soon be fully archived. Some early good quality collections of the OER on the platform are still being used, such as the Heat Project resources, and these will stay live. So this is just a picture of the archive spreadsheet, obviously the audit spreadsheet. I can't share all the details because that would be a GDPR problem. When a person creates a course, they are assigned the owner role by default so they can edit their course. If they need more advanced permissions for configuring some activities and need to see the learner progress data for their course, they are asked to complete and sign the data declaration form before we give them the course manager or teacher role for GDPR reasons. A message to learners is switched on so learners will know when they enroll that a person external to the OU has enhanced permissions to, for the course and can see learner progress data. The only data Open Learn Create holds about learners is their name, email address, OU computer username, um, OU personal identifier and the grades they've achieved in the courses they've enrolled on. It does not get date of birth or location from the OU central registration database. For a long time, our mailbox was monitored by only a couple of people in the team, me and a colleague. When the pandemic began and everyone wanted to study or create online courses, the mailbox was overwhelmed with messages from people. So we had to find a more efficient way of monitoring and responding to messages swiftly. We've taken the opportunity to train our team's digital production assistants in how to respond to the various types of inquiries, requests and demands. They previously had no contact with the learners and only selected direct contact with con course authors of the courses they helped create. They take it in turns to monitor the mailbox, investigate issues, respond to most messages, delete the spam and forward complex inquiries to the senior project managers or me for attention. We have monthly mailbox team meetings when we discuss how to deal with certain types of messages, have a log for the unusual ones they've helped handle and use an MS Teams chat forum where they ask each other for advice, building up a small community of good practice. Often their course production expertise and knowledge of the platform has helped with resolving queries to the mailbox. They've all become good at replying politely and helpfully to people and are curious to know more about the different ways people have set up OER on the platform. And then very quickly, because I know I'm running out of time, 
For research purposes, we have a stats and data dashboard of courses for each course. If a person has the course manager role for their course, they will be able to access these reports. Currently, the reports are fairly basic Moodle reports with no data visualization functionality. We have done some improvements to some of them, but have plans for new reports, which also include data visualizations. And in addition, for some courses, we use Google Analytics visitor data for researching the, the reach of the OER, which have been published on the platform. From the Google Analytics data, we know the site has had over 5 million users since the start of 2020. Our team at the OU is continuing to support open educational practices whenever we can, as we work with others to publish high quality OER in an endeavor to widen opportunities for learners around the world to access education. And sorry, I don't think there's time for any questions, but I guess there might be something in the chat. Um, I hope that was of interest and um, that's contact details if you need them. Thank you very much for listening.